Identity is the new perimeter. Now, you might have heard that before, and it is quite true. When it comes to cybersecurity incidents that I've investigated, majority of the time, I could trace it back to a compromised identity. Now, how did that user's identity get compromised? That we may never know. But there are some common ways that an identity can be compromised, such as phishing, info stealer malware, and companies getting breached. Today, I'll talk about some of the ways that we can reduce the risk of our identities getting compromised. And if you've seen my previous videos in the past, I am sure you know all of these tips. We'll start with number one, use a passphrase instead of a password. There are many benefits of using a passphrase compared to a password. Majority of people choose to use a common password like winter 2023 exclamation mark because well, it's easy to remember but it's also easy to crack. So what is the difference between a passphrase and a password? Well, for a password, it typically contains a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters. And usually the longer and complex you get with it, the stronger and better your password is, but it will be difficult for you as the user to remember it, which is why you should use a password manager such as Bitwarden, for example. Whereas a passphrase is a combination of words. So if you use a passphrase, it will not only make it difficult for an attacker to get into your account, but it'll also make it easier for you to remember it as well. For example, I like eating 10 apple pies on Monday is a great passphrase that is easy to remember and difficult for the attacker to get in. Number two, enable multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication or MFA adds an extra layer of security. MFA requires you to use two or more ways to authenticate yourself and these are something you know, like your password, something you are, like your fingerprint, and something you have, like a hardware token. There are many people who choose not to enable multi-factor authentication simply because it's annoying for them to verify their identity constantly whenever they log in. However, it is more annoying to have your account compromised. The trade-off is never worth it. When enabling multi-factor authentication, you typically have the option to send your code as a text message. Now this method, I do not recommend. Instead, I recommend you opt for an authentication application method and use something like Microsoft Authenticator or Authy. Don't make it easy for attackers to break in. Number three, update your software and applications. This is an easy way to protect yourself as updating software and applications can patch known vulnerabilities that attackers can exploit, which can lead to unauthorized access to your credentials. You always want to make sure that your antivirus is updated because this will allow your antivirus to have the latest signatures to detect malware on your machine. By updating your software and applications regularly is one way to reduce the risk from threats. Number four, educate yourself on phishing. Phishing is when an attacker sends you an email trying to get you to reveal sensitive information, such as your social security number, your credit card numbers, or your password. Now, how do we identify phishing? Well, some of the ways are the following. The email might address you generically and not by name. The contents may contain urgency or a threat. For example, you have 72 hours or your account will be deleted. It might also contain typos, links, and or attachments. You'll hear this in every security awareness training or video, but don't click on suspicious links or download attachments. If you receive an email that you're not expecting and it contains a sense of urgency along with links and or attachments, rather than clicking on the link or downloading the attachment, mark the email as spam and report it. One of the more common ways an identity is compromised is through phishing. So make sure you stay vigilant and be aware of phishing. Number five, regularly review your accounts. If you don't already, I highly recommend you review your online accounts. If you use social media quite heavily, I would recommend you check your sign-in activities. For example, if you're from the States and you review your sign-in activities and it's coming from China, it might be a good time for you to reset your password and, of course, enable MFA. The good news is that a lot of online applications now will send you a notification through your phone 
or an email if they suspect suspicious activity. However, the bad news is that attackers love to use this method to craft their phishing email or message. So the next time, if you receive a notification about suspicious activity for your account, rather than clicking on the link that is embedded in the email or message, manually navigate to the website itself, log in from there, and check any statuses. Identity is something that we should always be protecting as a simple compromise can have a huge impact on our digital lives. There are many ways to protect our online identity and if there is a method that I missed, leave it down in the comment section below as I am sure everyone will benefit from it. That is it for the video. If you found it informative and you enjoyed it, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.